Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023 Board of Trustees meeting. May I have a call to order? Mr. Kaley? Present. Dr. Spencer Robinson? Here. Mr. Quadro? Present. Mayor Ciara? Present. And Dr. Pearson Campbell will not be here today. May we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Julie? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Mission statement. <coughs> Smith Vocational an Agricultural High School is to prepare students for social responsibility, employment, and post-secondary education through rigorous applied technical and academic programs. Thank you. Is there any participation by the public today? <coughs> Hearing none. Participation by the trustees. Hearing none. none today. We'll go into new business. May I have a motion for discussion, possible action, vote to negotiate with Dietz, architect for design services for the horticulture building. So moved. Second. All in favor? Do you want discussion? Or further discussion? I can just give the board, give you some rationale for while, while we're even sitting here having this, this uh, discussion. So uh, <clears throat> in talking to our OPM, uh, Craig Wilbur, uh, he did some homework into the design services process, and um, we are allowed under state regulations uh, if we uh, respect the services that we received during the feasibility study, we are able to uh, retain those services for the design aspect of the, of the job. Um, so with that said, uh, we had some internal, internal conversations. Uh, there's nobody internally who uh, is opposed to that. Um, the question was, who has the authority to make that decision? Because there is a financial impact on, on a potential contract. Uh, there was conversations around, we have a building committee. I appreciate the board voting and allowing us to, to create a building committee. Um, I can show you the roster at some point in the meeting. Um, but I failed to ask the board um, to allow the board, uh, allow the building committee to have some type of financial oversight, um, which we'll talk about in the next agenda item. Uh, but the point is, somebody has to uh, authorize us uh, renegotiating with DEETS uh, to continue with the design services. And because we haven't authorized the building committee to have that power, that power still falls on, uh, on, on the table of the Board of Trustees. So that's why we're here for the motion. Uh, if anybody would want to, so I'll stop there for now. Um, for, the, for the discussion. Yes, and we'll, I'll add to what. Superintendent Andy just said um, this would certainly streamline our process, save us literally months probably in in the process of getting this uh, building design out to bid and constructed. And I think that's a huge benefit. And um, some people would say, well, it's not going out to say competitive proposals. There's arguments against that due to the the urgency that we're under to get this done and the longer we wait the longer construction costs go up. The early estimate this decision would save us approximately two months if not a little bit more. I would, even more. Yeah, I would agree probably even more but I would argue that deeds probably went above and beyond uh, during the feasibility study aspect. Uh, the detail that they provided simply for a feasibility study I think was more than we were looking for. Absolutely. Uh, which would hopefully then streamline even the design service phase of it. But, uh, and you, you're satisfied with the um, performance of deeds to this point? Yes. Okay. I will ask again. <laughs> Um, seeing we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We have a motion and a second for discussion, possible action, vote to authorize the building committee to have budgetary oversight on the horticultural building construction. So moved. Second. Further discussion? So if I can just chime in. Yeah. Uh, so maybe this might be a good segue. I just want to highlight in your packet is the initial early draft of the roster uh, 
the membership of the Horticulture Building Committee, so you know who would be sitting on that uh, on that particular committee. Uh, to give you some background, I, I reached out to a lot of my colleagues within MAVA uh, who are actively or recently completed a building project. Um, a building committee is, is required through any MSBA project. Uh, we're not going through MSBA, so it's not technically required, but uh, why not follow that same process? Uh, so a few things. Uh, the MSBA is very prescriptive as far as which stakeholders have to be part of a building committee, so we try to model ourselves a little bit after that. We're not meeting every single stakeholder uh, as prescribed by MSBA, uh, but we, we had that in mind. Uh, the other one was uh, I wanted to make sure that we had an odd number simply for voting purposes, make sure we didn't have any ties. Uh, so I was trying to maintain the odd number. And then the third thing I was really trying to focus on was um, the perception of, and, and trying to avoid any potential perception of stacking the deck. Uh, and, and I'm using the model of a, a school council that you know, principals have to follow. And in the regulations around school councils, uh, you're not supposed to have more than 50% of your membership being teachers, basically people who would directly answer to a building principal who oversees the school council. Uh, that way the principal can't push his or her own agenda through. Um, so what you see in front of you uh, is a draft of 13 positions. Uh, I would not consider the two trustees as <coughs> internal because you know, really necessarily an employee of the school, okay? Um, but in this draft, there would be six of the 13 would be current employees of the school, which means uh, that the majority of the membership would be from outside school employees, which I think is a valuable asset to the committee. Uh, obviously, we'd have trustee involvement, and I'd recommend you know, two trustees. Uh, you can see the six individuals who are current school employees. Uh, that's superintendent, business administrator, facilities director, principal, vocational director, and a teacher. Uh, that would be uh, the department head in horticulture, Mr. Nevin. Uh, we've already identified a student. Uh, I'm just waiting, we're waiting to have confirmation from uh, his father, uh, who can get him here during the summertime. Uh, but the student is very interested. He's a current horticulture student. Um, so we are assuming that we will fill that position. Uh, same thing with the advisory member. Uh, we're looking at a horticulture advisory member. Uh, Mr. Nevin has um, like a 95% confirmation. I'm just waiting for that. But we would have a member of the horticulture advisory sitting on uh, the building committee. Uh, again, somebody from industry who can give us some oversight, not oversight, but a perspective on what that facility can do to prepare future horticulture employees. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Mr. Requadro from the construction trades. Uh, Tom Berry, uh, I believe, most likely is. Some clarifications uh, required there. Um, he's an architect with Cumulative Architects, seeing that we're going to move forward and negotiate with DEETS. Um, they wouldn't, they're not in the game, so there would be no conflict of interest. He is on the, uh, he hasn't committed. Um, he's very interested. He has some questions we haven't connected to answer his questions, but I, I think he'll come on board. Um, I'm optimistic, and um, he brings great skill set to the table. He was in the trades, I believe, as a carpenter, and worked in the field for a number of years, and then went back to school and got an architectural degree. And he's employed by Cumulative Architects in. Uh, uh, in Amherst, and he's on the uh, Chad, uh, the Carpentry Shops Advisory Board. So you'd be a great asset. And go ahead. Uh, and the next one would be somebody who would oversee, not oversee, but speak on behalf of the, the various mechanical services. And that would be Jim Moran, who uh, I believe they also sell under advisory as well for plumbing. Uh, he is well known in the, in the region uh, when it comes to uh, HVAC systems. Yeah. And plumbing. And plumbing. And then lastly, uh, I want to thank Crystal for this recommendation. Uh, I did re reach out to Will Coffey, uh, who is the city's new procurement officer. Uh, I emailed him. Uh, he wrote back last night that he is uh, thank me for the invite, uh, and he's going to think about it and let me know. Uh, the rationale there is to have the procurement officer at the table, can really kind of guide us and make sure that we're doing things appropriately, and behind the scenes, hopefully make things more efficient. The, the lag time and communication back and forth, just trying to streamline that more. Uh, if Will declines, again, then we can look. Uh, we have some potential uh, parents that we could reach out to, to again, out, somebody outside of the school, uh, but to maintain that odd number of 13. 
or other recommendations from the board. A point of information, I was asked also to ask somebody to be on this, mm -hmm. and Jeff Marty, a local electrician for many years uh, in the city of Northampton, has uh, volunteered to, to participate. Now, <clears throat> we can juggle the schedule, the, the people-wise, uh, to make it come up to the 13th, but I uh, wanted to add his name. Okay. Um, Will will be in my office later today, so I will ask him about that. Okay. I really appreciate um, the um, intention that you have brought to uh, forming the committee and who you want to have included by virtue of um, their different positions and, and their roles, for sure. Um, it definitely feels discouraging to me to look at this and see, I think they're overwhelmingly male and maybe also only white. Um, and I'm thinking also that horticulture is, I, I know that um, girls in horticulture are, are non-traditional, but I think that we do have a lot of girls in a horticulture shop. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if we could consider folks who are female and people of color um, to diversify the committee. Um, I don't know if that is something that you could talk with Cindy Weeks Bradley about, strategies for doing that. Um, a couple things, because I would, I would just like, it's 2023, and I would love to have the opportunity for people to serve on this committee, which is going to be influential and a really great experience in terms of learning all of the things that are to learn in that, to open it up, to, to invite other people in, into it. And so I'm thinking maybe, um, you know, the student is going to be a boy, maybe another student could also be included. That also, like when they're, young people can be intimidated by older people, and certainly, so when you have, you know, a pair of you, that can help. Um, and then if there are other folks that we could consider who are people of color or female in the trades, and also maybe a parent would be another way to, to bring in some more diversity. It, it might not, so Cindy, I think, um, you know, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I would defer to her, but I'm sure she's got lots of experience in this area already, so maybe in increasing the number to 15 would still keep it odd but allow for yeah. that diversity that I think would be a real yeah. asset. Okay. And especially in terms of the opportunities that we'll right. be creating for folks and the message that we will be sending. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that would be the, the, the committee that we're talking about. You can sort of see the makeup and I, I, I think all the great points uh, shared. So as far as the, the, the potential discussion around authorizing this particular building committee to have budgetary oversight. Uh, in talking to my fellow superintendents across the state, uh, one thing I failed to do, and they reminded me was, uh, the school committee, i.e. the Board of Trustees, uh, because you have budget oversight of the school, uh, you would have to, in essence, um, provide that oversight, provide that allowance to the building committee to have the budgetary oversight. Uh, so that would require an official vote. So until that day happens, all budget decisions have to come up to the full board, which again, when we get into the, the, the height of uh, the, the rebuild project, would be kind of, uh, own, you know, honors trying to get all of you back around the table to have uh, various votes when you're not sitting necessarily around the building committee and, and you don't know what's happening as far as the building project in, in the weeds. So. Uh, it was recommended by all the superintendents that you know, we have a vote to allow the building committee to have the budget oversight. Um, a recommendation that came up, and I, I fully support, is that perhaps you want to give a, a financial max to that. At the end of the day, you're still the Board of Trustees. Uh, you, you do still have ultimate authority over the budget. Um, you know, the way the motion is written uh, was written in a way to keep it global and open-ended, and you could vote simply on that, and you allow the building committee to spend all the money, okay, as a see fit, uh, or you may want to have some oversight and allow the, the building committee to to authorize up to a certain amount, and anything over that amount comes back to the full board. Uh, I will say it's not on the motion, but I'm just going to preview potentially uh, other recommendations that came to me from the, the superintendents is that uh, when we get into the construction phase, unfortunately, uh, change orders, are, they happen, okay? And change orders can happen at a pretty frequent pace, unfortunately, at, at times. And the longer we wait to have a response on every single change order, A, it prolongs the building project, uh, potentially increases costs, 
And what the building committees elsewhere, what they've done is they've actually uh, authorized to create a, uh, basically a change order subcommittee of the building committee. Uh, it'd be a very small group that could quickly get together, review the change order, and either approve or, or deny that change order. Because otherwise we're trying to get the full building committee back together for every single change order. So uh, my recommendation is that as a board, you vote to allow the building committee to have financial oversight, perhaps up to a certain limit. Uh, and then allow the building committee to come together uh, and, and get to know one another uh, and then through the, the guidance of our, our OPM, uh, Kurt, maybe give us a, a recommendation. I have no idea the cost of change orders. You know, and kind of give us, you know, this is sort of the threshold. Uh, and perhaps we come back and we ask the board uh, to allow a, a subcommittee to be formed who can then authorize change orders up to a certain amount. Uh, but that's a vote for another day. Uh, so today is just a general oversight authorization. And if you feel more comfortable, maybe providing some limits to what that oversight is. Yeah, I'd like to add that uh, I agree with the Indian on it being expedient, but one of my concerns is that the building committee does have a cap in regards to that the people we're going to put on here, I'm sure we're going to appreciate their effort. Uh, but I'm concerned about the dollars, as we've talked about through this whole process. So I think that. They're going to be looking for guidance from us as the Board of Trustees, and I think we need to, to put together, uh, not, not to tamper down what they're doing, but financially to address uh, so that you have a, uh, when a change order comes in, or Rick, if you are going to lead that uh, short, smaller group for change orders, that both of you have an understanding of where we want to go in this. So that I think as the voters of the city of Northampton who we're responsible to as well feel good about somebody having over so, so I think it's fine to have a limit, but just to be so there are gonna be two trustees on there in, in addition to the superintendent and additional in addition to Crystal. So it seems like there'll be a lot of fiscal oversight just within yeah. the committee itself as well. Excellent. Excellent point. Um, in terms of uh, address um, Andy's comment about maybe fast pat faced and fast paced and frequent change orders. This project, I envision, we shouldn't have many change orders. It's brand new. It's brand new facility. Um, Tim's got a good idea of the site, and hopefully, all that stuff will be vetted out through the process with this committee reviewing the design as, as it's built, um, hopefully we'll cover all our bases. That's my two cents worth. And is there an amount that you had in mind or would recommend as a maximum, or are we not voting on that now? I don't have, I, I could throw a number out there, 100,000. Yeah. Uh, that's just a number we're making up. Um, I do, I think this vote has to happen, uh, whether it's just global and then we come back to it, um, or we say 100,000 if, if that's a, an agreeable number, which could always be fine. We find that we get into the weeds, 100,000 goes by like that. We're all still coming back to the board all the time. Uh, maybe we want to then raise it, but I'd be okay with 100,000. Uh, I think it, it provides, I, I feel, a safety net. I think it provides uh, a comfort level for the board to know that uh, this building committee, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think there's some uh, great people on the committee who have some financial oversight to begin with. Um, but I do respect uh, the role that the board has, and uh, I think 100,000, anything above that, we have to come back to the board. Anything under that, I would respect the members of the committee that we're going to you know, choose wisely and make some wise decisions. Does it make sense to vote on that now in, in the interest of expediency? I, 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 I believe so. So should we amend that motion? Sure. I would amend it. To include a maximum amount of $100,000? So Sounds the motion, good. The motion as it reads right now is to authorize the building committee to have budgetary oversight of the amount of $100,000 of the horticulture building construction. Does that read correctly? I I'm not sure it does. No. I think you're only limiting it to the first hundred thousand. 
do you mean a hundred thousand at a time? <clears throat> you're looking for a hundred thousand. Like one vendor might be a hundred and ten thousand. You come another. You could have four vendors that are seventy-two thousand. Or is it is it something under a hundred thousand? That's what my I guess my question is. Yeah, part good, of the point, Joe, good point, Joe. Good point. Um, the way way <clears throat> it should read really here, the wording um, we've got to get it right is that the maximum change order, which encompassed the complete change order, all the all the costs involved in that extra work, um, if it's a hundred and less, the change order subcommittee and the building committee is authorized to approve. If it's more than that, it's got to go to the full board, to this group. Per change order. Well, just not, four, four. I think you're asking for not just change. I'm sorry to confuse it. I was confused. I, you mean individual expenditures of under 100000 can fall to this committee? Mm -hmm. And an individual, char anything over 100000 has to come back to the board for approval. Is that in what we're trying to In accomplish? terms of extra work, there's going to be monthly requisitions or gotcha. applications for payment yep. based on an AIA document. And um, you're familiar with it at this point. Um, and built in that it will be minimum of 5% retainage. Some are even structured where there will be 10% retainage and then at 50% of the cost of the project mm -hmm. being complete it can drop to but, 5 But when you sign, when the board, I'm sorry to interject, yeah. but when the board approves the contract those payment plans will be built into the contract. So the, our, the subcommittee would just be overseeing the uh, our side of, of with upholding the contract, right? That they've met theirs and we've met ours. But I think when you're talking about a hundred thousand dollar money limit, you don't mean to issue payment because that payment would already be built in the contract. So is right. it is it change orders or additional costs under a hundred thousand this committee can approve? I envision individual contracts. So it's not that the board was authorizing the first hundred thousand dollars to be granted to the building. <laughs> it would be any contract, any vendor that we go into business with as long as it's less than $100,000, mm -hmm. the building committee would have authorization to okay that. If it's over $100,000, <coughs> then that would have to come to the board for, for discussion and vote. Um, that would be my recommendation. So basically, you're allowing, you would allow the building committee to spend up to $100,000 at a time for whatever the contract happens to be. Uh, a change order would be on top of that, and I don't have a figure for that. That would be we well, I, I'm, I'm confused by your wording here. I, I would call it a change order work or extra work. Uh, you keep using the word contract. You, you, you're contracted with, the, well, however it is, CM at risk or general contractor. He, he is responsible for the whole project. Mm -hmm. He has contracts with the individual trades and um, that's his responsibility to manage any any each month they'll submit a common term as requisition um, for payment and we will have to sign off on that with you know conversations with our OPM who's on board schoolhouse um, and then for instance say some, some, for some reason, we need a large change order, which I certainly hope we don't. Um, and they will assemble the costs, and it will be presented to us as a change order to the contract through the CM at risk or the general contractor, mm -hmm. and we sign off on that. Um, so 100000 and less per extra work change order would be, oh, the way we're trying to word this is, mm -hmm. would be okay for the change order subcommittee to approve without going to the full board. Debbie, now, are you now comfortable with the verbiage? No. No, it sounds to me like there's two different two motions yeah, being yeah. discussed yeah. right here. Yeah, the first one I don't think met that intent of the board. So I, I did, that's why I, yeah, we I have think to, this, we this have to clarify the way so that she has it in a minute. And now I would say I think more you, is to your intent. That, and I, yeah. Okay. I think Rick, but I do. I think my mindset is beginning to change after listening to you. Um, but I, I fail to, to to think about the general contractor. So really, you know, the first motion I was already approved. We're going to negotiate with Deets, mm -hmm. have a contract at some point. Right. 
Okay, hopefully it will be signed. Uh, Dietz is going to then complete the design service project, which is actually designing the building for us. Um, yeah, and with their consultants. Correct. So now we have a building, we have the plans, we have everything we know. The next phase, which is, we'll probably come back to the, the full board for a vote, will be um, to go out to bid for the contractor services. Who's going to be the general contractor who's going to be overseeing the building Correct. of the building? You're right. And that bid will be all of the sub bids mm -hmm. probably part, as part of that. Correct. Have the, okay. And that's where I, I, I fail to make that connection. So as a board, you will vote on a general contractor who's going to build it. And we will have the assumption of all the sub budgets, how much is it going to be for electrical and plumbing and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. When the painting contractor, uh, and we have sort of the, the estimate in the general contractor bid, uh, how much painting is going to be, the painter comes forward to say, I'm sorry, but the painting went through the roof. And that would be a change order to change the budget amount for painting. The potential. Hold on. The only reason, say, let's use that example. The painting contractor came back and said, went through the roof. Say the cost of his materials escalated. That's his problem. If he didn't build that into his painting contract, mm -hmm. quote, mm -hmm. unless it was really something crazy, um, the, somehow the spec on the paint got screwed up and it wasn't the right product and he brought forth forward and hopefully that will all be vetted out during this process and something like that won't happen but let's use it as an example um, generally he wouldn't really have a leg to stand on and he gets he submits a price that he's locked into so let's say then we decide we want to paint the outside in addition to the inside that would be a change order. yeah there you go right. mm -hmm. sounds good okay. thank you and so as long as that change order was under a hundred thousand dollars it wouldn't come to the to the trustees. If it was right. about 100,001 or over, it would come to the trustees. So Correct. I think if you just changed your wor your verbiage to under 100 as opposed to up to the first 100. Right, right. I think, I think that it's per change order. It per change, that's right. It's yep. per change order, not aggregate. I think, yes, I, that's that's what I thought. Yep. That, that's yep. what I thought the language was saying as it's before. Right, right. So I want to make sure we were clearing the board's intent. But you're not even thinking there are going to be change orders. Well, there's going to be there's some. Always there's always some. There, no, how much vetting you do, there's always some. But I can't envision this size project because it's going to be many. Okay. And with a team like this and an architect that's done his due diligence to this point, um, I think, you know, we'll have things pretty well vetted out. Does the $100,000 amount seem right to you? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we don't it sounds to me like we need to have this second one uh, vote to authorize the building committee to have budgetary over oversight up to one hundred thousand dollars, if I hear you correctly. I think it's an and that they have budgetary oversight and, and authority and authority to approve to change you. orders up to one hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're comfortable with that though? That'd be my recommendation. Approved to authorize the building committee to have budgetary oversight and authority to approve change orders up to one. So you're adding thousand. that? Yes. Okay. And okay. But isn't the change order a separate one? That it was up to including budgetary oversight, including <coughs> authority to approve change orders up to hundred thousand. Up to you could change the word and two things. One is this right. we're saying they fulfill their contract and we can release funds according to the contract. You're overseeing the budget and as you a group, and then nice no. So, I think we need to ask for another motion, a second, because we did change it, right? Rick can amend his motion. Yeah. Um, you don't have to repeat it, <laughs> just, just, just say. So that uh, somebody do the original motion in a second. I'm but sorry, sir. I'm just saying that you need to say that that you agree to the motion. I agree to the motion as amended. Amended, mm -hmm. correct. Okay. So I need to do you want Deb to reiterate the motion? That would be wise. A motion was made by Dr. Spencer Robinson and seconded by Mr. Quadro to approve to authorize the building committee 
to have budgetary oversight and the authority to approve change orders up to $100,000 for the horticulture building construction. We could change the word and to including. Budgetary and then, oversight including authority. And then maybe the change including order the authority, is not... Yeah. Including authority or including, including the, the... Yep, yeah, the authority, including okay. the authority. Then maybe add the word each change order mm -hmm. so it's not confused to the aggregate. Yeah. For the budgetary authority to include to. Would you mean to read it again? Yeah. A motion was made by Dr. Spencer Robinson and seconded by Mr. Quadro to approve to authorize the building committee to have budgetary oversight, including the authority to approve each change order up to $100,000 for the horticulture building construction. Yeah. That sounds good. Joe? I think so, Crystal. You so thought, a motion I, thought, and a I thought the first part was that the building committee had the authorization to make budget decisions up to a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That was my understanding. So that's where I'm that, gonna, that's where the, 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 that's where my brain was originally. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, Rick, I think Rick really clarified when. We we'll already have authorized right. the contract. Yeah, we've already Perfect. authorized okay. the contract. Okay. Yeah. The yep. CM at risk owns the contract Perfect. or the general yep. contractor. Right. It goes out to hard bid, yep. it would be a general contractor. It goes out negotiated style, guaranteed maximum price, which is a whole other discussion we'll have to have as we get Craig Moore on board. And I'm on the fence on which way to go, in my opinion. Um, we'll, we'll have to figure that out. Um, now, something to say, everybody's aware, as long as we're here today. Um, I don't know what the, we have to build into our budget, you know, say the bid goes out, right now we're looking at $7.5 million. So that 7.5 is what we have, what we can afford, say. So the bid needs to come in less than that because we're going to have to have built-in contingency of at least 5% maybe seven or eight percent um, that we're you know if our budget is 7.5 we want the bid coming in at whatever seven million because anticipating we are going to spend that contingency amount yeah. and we will have to figure all that out how much money do we actually have six million as of my last check not money check, my check on the money. <laughs> Six million twenty six thousand one hundred nine dollars and thirty one cents. Okay. So a million and a half short. Correct. Based on the feasibility estimate. But we still have to vote on this. Yeah, we, yes, that's yep. okay. so the sidebar, sorry. We have the motion, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and more to follow. And so we will work on negotiating with Keats. The next big negotiation will be down the road. My understanding of the next big negotiation will be with the general contractor. That will be the, that will come before, uh, in front of the, the full board. Uh, and then from that point, it's managing that and dealing with potential change orders. Yeah. Gotcha. Our future business May 16th, regular board of trustees meeting at 5 p.m. in the library. I ask for somebody for, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor?